Tonight, DAZN is bringing the sport and the champions back to the country. We are live from Domo Al-Qaeda here in beautiful Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. And with that, we welcome you inside Domo El Cade, C-O-D-E. Here's our tale of the tape. Gabriel Valenzuela, 26 years old, 5'10", 139 pounds. He's got a four-inch reach advantage over Juan Okura, who took this fight on two weeks' notice. His record is not that impressive. But his bravery is, let's see if he can parlay that into a special moment in his career coming up next. You have to soften guys like this up. And he's going to get his shots in as well. That's what Okura has done. Again, taking this fight on two weeks' notice. Okura's game, though. I give him credit. He's in there. He's trying to, he's trying to push the fight. He's trying to be victorious. He didn't just come to pick up a check. And that's what I was worried about. I didn't mention that earlier, Chris or Todd. But I was a little worried about that. Thankfully, we don't have that. We have a fight. Sometimes, though, you'll see a fighter that takes the fight on short notice, and they look pretty good the first two, three rounds. And then in the later stages, they just gas out. Let's see if Akura can avoid that as he lands a left hook. And he's given as good as he gets. Look Ooh. at Juan Akura going right after Venezuela. Oh, and I just took a left hook, and it's heating up here. Venezuela got stunned by that hook, and it infuriated him. I could tell right away. He came back with his own big hook. And fighting in front of your hometown fans gives you a little extra edge, doesn't it? Of Jesse? course, you don't want to let them down. I mean, all these people are here to cheer him on. Yeah, Eddie Hearns ringside. Eddie and Chepa are in Oso just across the ring from us as well. He knows the value in looking good here tonight. Wow. Good fight to start things here tonight on the zone. I know a lot of fans are, whoa, uppercut there from Valenzuela. I know a lot of fans were wondering, when is Jesse Vargas fighting again? Do we have an update? We hope that we get to fight soon. Uh, you know, we're here actually meeting with Eddie Hearn soon and, and my advisors, and hopefully we, we all get to put, it, put something together very soon, because I can't wait to get back in the ring. My, my fists are literally itching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an uppercut! Oh, what an uppercut! Right hand, and it's a detonation of bomb right on the jaw of Akura. He's still stunned. He is still stunned. How, what a perfect shot. How did he get up from that? <laughs> that uppercut literally lifted him up and brought him down to the canvas. What a shot. When Akura hit the oh. canvas, I thought this fight is over. And yet here he is, still on his feet, at least for the moment. You know something, Todd and Chris, the thing here is that Okura seems very well recovered. I mean, even though it was a brutal knockdown, he seems to be okay now, coming into the fourth round. I don't know how okay he is keep taking those punches. Like I said to you, Todd, you can't go the distance with guys like Dennis Brinchik and Ivan Mendy without having a really good set of whiskers. How many whiskers does he have left after that uppercut? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not too certain. It looks like he's well-shaped. <laughs> oh, and a left hook almost spins Akura around. He was fighting to win earlier, but right now it's survive for Okura. Whoa. So Valenzuela was able to know and dissect what hurts Okura, and it's the body shots. The yep. body shots hurt him. That's why he's going on the on the attack now. You can see the right hand is down for Akura. He's trying to protect those rib cage. And Valenzuela taking advantage. The end may be near. The crowd cheering him on. His hometown crowd here in Guadalajara. Another body shot from Venezuela. Well, as well as looking for two shots, the body shot or the counter uppercut. We'll see which one lands first, or if Okuda's able to do something different to put Valenzuela in trouble and distract him a bit. More jabs this round for Valenzuela.
It appears Akura has bounced back again. Right when you think he's done, oh, what a body he shot. comes back. Ouch. Todd, that was a good body shot as well. And still might be near. That was the first time we've seen Akura hold on. Round seven of an eight rounder. You could tell by as well as just testing him. He's testing him. He's looking for that big shot. Take him out. You could just look at his eye, the eye of the tiger, if you want to call it. That was one shot that he planned perfectly. It was off by a millisecond. Akura's out, uh, out punching, or his output, is almost non-existent compared to his previous rounds. Todd, Okura's calling him out. And come on, come get some. You believe this guy? And that'll do Fight's it. Over. The referee says enough is enough. And Gabriel Valenzuela gets a hard-earned win in front of his hometown crowd here in Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rodrigo Flores calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 10 seconds of round number seven. Your winner by TKO, El Orgullo del Cerro del Cuatro, Gabriel Goyas Valenzuela. It is Diego Pacheco about to make the walk. He's three years younger than his opponent, Jesus, who, by the way, is also undefeated and full of confidence. He's not so sold on how great Pacheco is, but that seven-inch reach disadvantage will be a very big problem. What's well, been, a, I guess, a couple of years where his profile has, has skyrocketed. He was an 18-year-old kid, really unknown, and then signed by one of the biggest promoters on the planet, suddenly thrust into the spotlight, but he's dealt with it amazingly well. And, you know, you saw Morioki throw that big uppercut on the break. That did not please Pacheco at all, who tried to punish him for it. No, no, that's what he needs to watch out for. He can't be such a nice kid because, you, I mean, even touching someone's glove during a fight, you can get caught. You get caught with a sucker punch. Yep. He needs to learn that people are vicious. He needs to stay just as vicious as others. He's too nice inside the ring. That's one of his mistakes, one of his only mistakes that I've been able to see. Left hook there from Morioki, and his corner goes wild every time he comes close to hitting Pacheco. Yeah, I think they're just trying to give an incentive to continue moving forward, to continue trying those new moves, those hole makers. You know, because right now, Maroyoki seems like a like like a fighter that doesn't believe in himself. He, he really can't do much. Oh, that hurt him. Yeah, that hurt him. Got a big smile out of Morioki, who, trust me, doesn't smile all that much. There they are again. Uppercut from Pacheco. Todd, he's Another not in good uppercut. conditions. He's in, he's in terrible condition at the moment. He's a little unbalanced. Oh, and another left uppercut. The mouthpiece comes out. Marioki is brave. He's a brave fighter. Yeah, he's smiling, but he's in big trouble, no doubt at all. And just wonder if his corner going to try and just slow this oh. process down just to give him a few extra seconds. And the referee being very generous as well. Pacheco was on the verge of stopping this fight. And the referee may step in here in a minute as Morioki backs up against the ropes. That's that big hellmaker that Marioki loves to throw. But after a while, your opponent begins to guess what you're going to throw if you continue doing so. Ooh, Got him right again. Hand. Oh, again, the oh, mouthpiece wow. comes out. This time, they'll wave it off. What a performance in Mexico by Diego Pacheco. Good stoppage. Good stoppage by the referee who was just taking in a lot of punishment, but that last shot that tossed out his mouthpiece, I mean, it could be considered similar to a knockdown, literally. I mean, he hit him right on the chin, he was hurt, he was stunned, his balance was off, you know, and I think it was a good decision by the referee. It was a, it was a good win, great win, and a great learning experience for Diego Pacheco. I think this is one of the great talents coming up on the rise as a, as a prospect. He got tested by co the COVID PCR test, and he got <laughs> tested inside the ring. And you could see here the combination. She just did not stop throwing. Every time you heard him, he was on the attack. And that's why the referee saw here again, the replay. You see the uppercut that, that landed at will right on the chin, caused the mouthpiece to be removed, oh. just flying around, and he's still on the attack. You know, and, and that's when the referee just said, you know what, this is enough. 
You know, he's been hurt enough in this fight, and I think it was a good call. I mean, there was no way of coming coming back from a response from Aroyoki, and he was just getting hurt, maybe. Um, make him live to fight another day. Hopefully, he's able to better his technique. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Cesar Castagnon calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 17 seconds of round number six. Your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Diego Pacheco. Welterweight division. Jorge Perez Sanchez, six years older. He's also three inches taller and will enjoy a two inch reach advantage over 22 and one Christian Gomez. There we go. Jorge Perez Sanchez, he, he stopped boxing for about seven years. You know, he's in the military and then he just uh, recently came back into sport. He has a good record. He has very good talent. I'll tell you what, how I know him. We were actually in the Mexican Olympic team together. Wow. He was uh, an alternate. An, oh, oh, nice oh, left wow. hook. Big shot from Gomez. And there's the punch we were waiting for. And then to the body. Well, so that was the, the shot he caught Xavier Wilson with in his last fight. He gets the elbow so high on that check left hook because he gets opponents to overcommit. And I said to you, it wouldn't be long before this one catches fire. And it was when... Perez just committed over the front foot that he was caught, and, well, suddenly we have a fight on our hands. Sanchez needs to switch it up a little bit. He's doing the same thing. He's just tossing the, the jabs at, at the mid-range almost, you know, where you're giving him the opportunity to come back, just like he did there. And this oh. time, Perez oh. decides to exchange, and that is a horrible idea. Perez Sanchez rocked in the first, and he's down in the second. Let's see if Gomez can close him out right here. Sanchez has to get off the ropes. He's got to stay on the move. Big uppercut misses again. Under 10 to oh. go. That uppercut clipped it. Perez praying for the bell to ring. Perez holding, holding, trying to stay alive, trying to stay in the fight. And that will do it wow. for an electrifying round for Christian Gomez. <laughs> what do you make of Gomez's lack of output the last couple of rounds? I just think the adjustments from Perez Sanchez have, have been the better of the two. He's managed to keep the distance, his feet, he's been very, very disciplined with his feet in and out. He hasn't held them or committed his weight at any point. That was when he got tagged early in the contest and, and hurt, but he hasn't done that the last two rounds, hasn't given Gomez the openings that perhaps he assumed he would get based on those first two rounds. And that's really what this has been about. The adjustments from one fighter have been a little better than the others, and now it's going to be on Gomez to, to make adjustments himself. Exactly. He's very disciplined. That's what's changed. You know, he saw the mistakes that he was making, and he's not currently making them. He needs to maintain that if he wants to win this fight. Yep, absolutely. He just got caught with a big hook right now because he opened up and he became in the distance. Oh, it's Gomez. the body! Oh, and oh. that hurt Perez! He's that hurt. hurt him bad! He's against the ropes! He's grimacing! Gomez not going to let him get away that easy! Yeah, his legs are not under it, Todd, and this is where Gomez needs to step on him. He's got a minute here. Another body shot, and that hurt him! He's soft, he's soft right now. He had 52 seconds last in the round. Gomez taking a deep breath, though. Fatigue may be a factor. All it takes is one punch to change the momentum of the fight. And that left hook to the body definitely did. It's a good fight. I mean, uh, to all the viewers, I mean, this is a, a perfect fight where you're learning how, or you're just viewing how a person, a fighter, has to keep the strategy in order to stay away from getting knocked out. In this case, it would be El Nino, you know, uh, Gomez Duran, who has the punchy power to knock out Sanchez. But Sanchez is finding ways to stay away from getting hit, from being tagged by those big right hands and uppercuts. It's all strategy at this point. The conditioning is a factor as well because, you know, Liga, Liga, the Sanchez has a lot of... Uh, a lot oh, of oh, he stepped into that right hand, and that caught it big, and he's firing an uppercut now. Straight right hand, left oh. hook. They're in the corner slugging it up. This is not where Perez Sanchez wants to be. Not at all. Not at all. Whoa, what a hook. He's trying to hold on to the ropes. 
<laughs> wow. Perez teetering on disaster here. He's got to get out of the line of fire. 15 seconds, 13, 12 seconds. Will he be able to get out of the round? The crowd urging Gomez on. Fantastic action here. What a battle. Even I'm clapping, what a heart. They're gonna take the tape off and let him fight with the laces only. I'm not sure what's going on. Could this be an old gamesmanship I've to never, buy more time? Honestly, I've never seen this before in boxing. I don't know what the reason was uh, from the tape to be removed. Was it bothering him? Was, was, was it coming undone? I, I don't know. I, honestly, as I'm looking at it, I, I'm just amazed and baffled by what's going on. And it wasn't just, we've seen where tape gets cut off, Chris, with, with uh, yeah. scissors, but this is both gloves. He took it off. And there was obviously a problem from the start because they didn't even put the stool in the corner. He went straight into the corner. The thing is that this isn't good for, for Sanchez because you're just giving Gomez time to recover. And who has the punching power? Exactly. Who's fatigued? Who's tired? Gomez. He got an extra minute. Right now he's like, all right, I'm, I'm refueled. Let's go. You know, you'll see it right now. You'll see the mentality. I have never seen that. Not a good idea from whoever initiated that. And I don't know what the reason was. Ninth round, though, two minutes, four and eight seconds. You see that strong, stiff jab? You see the power difference? No, oh, there's a wow. right hand and a big left, and Gomez does appear to be revitalized a little bit. Yeah, you can never underestimate the recovery uh, that an extra minute can get you in boxing. These guys are so, so fit, so well conditioned that 60 seconds more is, you know, like 15 minutes to the average person. 15 seconds can give you so much, so more, much more and bigger opportunities for the next round if you're really fatigued. Oh, what a right. That was a great right hand to the body by Liga Sanchez. And a straight, right, got caught. straight right from Gomez. And then another one overhand right. Caught it with the left oh, hook. Oh, that's buckled the legs. He's buckled two minutes remaining. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to survive this one. Oh, oh what an wow. Face down. And they've already waved it off. And it's over. A one punch knockout winner for Christian Gomez here wow. in Guadalajara. Whoever did that move. That was a good right uppercut. That was a great right uppercut by Gomez. He took advantage of it. Good win for him. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Cesar Castagnon calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage. 59 seconds of round number nine. Your winner by TKO de Guadalajara. And now we get set for the tail of the tape for our co-main event of the evening. Madalon, 33 years old, one year older than Argumento. Very similar in height, the reach also pretty close. This one's scheduled for 12 rounds, and it is for the WBA Interim Light Flyweight Championship of the World. But right now our co-main event, also a world title bout. Whoa. Big winding right hand, and it catches him on the exit as well. The only, win that, the only way that Argumento wants to win is by knockout. Look at those hailmakers that he tosses, you know? He, he definitely packs a punch. I mean, having 15 knockouts out of the 24 victories that he has, but he needs to be very cautious because, I mean, uh, from what I see from Montellon is that he's very, very uh, strategic, right? He's very technical. He fights, he fights in the inside, stays very tight, composed, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to help him out in the long run. I agree, he's a more experienced fighter, and you can tell. I mean, he's just trying to fight in the inside. You know, as for Matillon, he's trying to fight on the outside, but Argumedov doesn't let him. No, you know, he just rushes him quickly, hits the body, hits up top. Oh, oh what a hellmaker there. Big right hand from Argumedo. And I think you're right, Jesse. He wants a knockout, nothing else will do. Four straight wins for Argumedo with Eddie Reynoso in his corner. I think he knows what he's up against. And uh, in order to win, you need to knock him out or really hurt him. Looks oh, like he's, he's got a cut. Yeah, cut. Maybe dripping down from the hairline a little bit. Yeah. And it's just whether or not that starts to, to run into the eyes to whether it impedes the vision or becomes a problem. And we'll get a, a closer look at that in between the round, I guess. He's just try, trying to stay away from those big punches of Barco Oh, what a right hand he landed. 
you know, Argumelo to Monteyon. And he's staying with that pressure. He, he came in good shape, you can tell. I think the doctor is going to come up, take a look at the cut. Oh, wow, port. it's really spewing. Yeah. It's yeah. really, really spewing. I think that's why they were asking in the round, in between rounds, what round is it? What round is it? Because if it goes before round, before four rounds, I believe, it uh, the fight gets called off and yeah. it goes to no decision. That's right. Here's the clash of heads right there. Wow. wow. Yeah, it was a open, open up straight away, didn't it? No one's really at fault there. No, no. It was an accidental clash of heads. Now the question is, will it be stopped? Will they continue? Give us a second, we'll be able to find out. It's a really strange place to, to have a cut right on the temple. The referee trying to get control over this fight, which doesn't really seem out of control. But nevertheless, we're back at it. Let's see how that cut affects Argumento. Yeah, but Luis Pavone is going to keep an eye on it. He's a great referee. I've seen him before. He actually refereed some of my fights. Great ref. Oh, it's going to cause chaos, this oh, cut. Yeah. You can just see already, this, if this is what it's like moments after, it's, this is going to be... It, you're right, Chris. It, it's not around the eye, and yet it's still just as bothersome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be a bloody mess if they continue this fight. It's a big cut. It's a huge bleeding shame. excessively. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge shame, this. Well, let's see if Argumento throws caution to the wind and says, you know what? I'm trying to win this title. I may not get another crack at this if they stop the fight. Right now, it looks like Argumento is just on the attack. He doesn't care. He says, I'm bleeding, but I'm going to win. I'm going to win. That's what it's looking like. Big shots given back and forth. And that gives opportunities for Mateo. And they will go to work on that cut. So multiple abrasions on the face right now of Jose Agumeto, but he's fighting through it like a champ. What a right hand that really stunned him. He might be in trouble, but he's still coming forward. He doesn't care. You come with a good punch, but I'm going to keep moving forward. That's his mindset. Those headbutts, you see those headbutts right there? They just happened again. And, and what? And look Mateo at Argumento. Clubbing shots to Mateo. He's tr Mateo is trying to stay under the head of Argumento. That way it prevents from him being cut. So he's actually being a smart veteran in this move. Good counter right. Mateo's throwing the straight, quicker punches. But the bombs are coming from Agamedo. In the last couple of rounds, it just seems like Argumento's run out of ideas. Yeah, it does a little bit, and it was route one, and I think he probably assumed that at some point this pressure would get to Mateon. Maybe didn't. Oh, and there's Mateo, and he's finally stepping forward wow. and landing those punches. Here's the moment we've been waiting for. Mateo senses the end could be near. Well, who saw this coming? Who saw this coming? He stepped off, he's been patient, he's picked his shots well. Oh, he's just coming in again. Wow. And in some ways, this is good for Argumento because Mateo will be more uh, open to be hit. Argumento looking over to his corner to some instructions, and I'm sure it's the same that anyone else would tell him. Go get him. You got a minute left. They are both tired. You can look at their, just the look on their faces is exhausted. Well, you're supposed to be in round 12 of the title fight, aren't you? It's a must, sir. Yeah. But you can still, I mean, what I'm saying is they're tired, but they're still looking for ways to win. They're, they're, they're waiting for the next counter punch. Waiting on the next attack. Agamedo's still a bloody mess. 30 seconds left, final round.
So this will go to the judges' scorecards. Agamedo better early, Mateone better late. Good assessment. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Guadalajara, we go to the judges' score totals. Jose Roberto Torres, 117 to 111. Uriel Aguilera and Carlos Ruiz both scored it out, 115 to 113. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. Decision unanime. Y todavía, and still, the WBA Interim Life Lightweight Champion of the World, Daniel El Verdugo Mateon. Well, his record certainly doesn't jump off the screen, or maybe it does, but for all the wrong reasons, Chris, he's 12, 4, and 2 with only three knockouts, and yet here he is with the opportunity of a lifetime. Scheduled for 12, this is for the WBC Flyweight Championship of the World. The champ, Martinez in the red trunks, Cordova in the gold. Let's see how Cordova handles the power of Martinez. Some fighters think they can, and the first time they get touched, their entire demeanor changes. But yep. Chris, as you know, these two men know each other very well. They're friendly, they've sparred before, so Cordova should have that experience behind him. Yeah, and he started really well, Cordova. He's picked his shots well, but he hasn't stayed in front of Martinez too long, in and out, and that's how he has to be, especially for these first four or five rounds. If it goes that far, of course, the problem with Martinez is he could just change the course of a fight in the blink of an eye, but Cordova looks relaxed, comfortable. He's even smiled in there yeah. a couple of times. They know each other well, these guys, and they will enjoy putting on a show for the fans, but Cordova, I think, knows what he has to do. And you have to remember, there have been guys that have had success uh, against Martinez that have been boxing well against them until he managed to change the, the course of the fight. The one guy that really tried to mix it with him was Christopher Rosales, and we saw how that ended for him. But Cordova, as you say, he has got a little bit more information and data on Martinez than any of those guys. And how about and Cordova? Well. Excuse me, Chris, going right after Martinez. Not backing down at all, and there's a right hand. So Cordova told us he wouldn't be afraid, told us he wouldn't back up, and that's what he's doing here in the first round. Cordova knows what to watch out for, but he's still getting caught. He's just brave. He's a brave man. Going up against Martinez, knowing that he has the punch of power and still being able to mix it up with him. But with a record like 12-4-2, and two, you're not going to get too many world title opportunities. Cordova has to make the most of this. Exactly. He's not fighting bad, though. He, I mean, he's being very cautious as well. And he knows that after, after Martinez scores one punch, you're going to have two or three more coming. And that's why as soon as he gets caught with one, he backs out, just like he did now. Swing and miss for both guys. Similar style, except for Martinez is more polished and he knows what he's doing. Cordova going right after Martinez and he landed a shot across the chin. Cordova is not fighting like Martinez is the 25 to one favorite, which he is. He's definitely not considering Martinez's punching power. He's not afraid of it. He's been connected a few times, but he's just pressing forward. He wants to win. He, he's an entertainer, you can definitely tell. He's taking risk. Ooh, Ooh, that hook missed by a little bit. That's the thing with Martinez. He literally jumps into every punch. Good uppercut with the right hand for Cordova. El Rey with the left hook. Wow. Oh, straight right sneaks through there. But Cordova fires back. A wild right hand from Martinez. Not a lot of textbook punches thrown right now for Julio Cesar. Oh, Cordova caught him with the right. He's having fun in there. 
Martinez isn't happy right now. He's like, all right, we're in a fight. We're not friends. Let's go. He's surprised that he's doing so well. At least that's what I can see from his, from his facial expressions. Well, and also, Jesse, you mentioned the frustration that you could see in the, the hand wrapping, having to get his hands wrapped twice. It's a long, long process, nearly an hour having to sit there, take them off a, and start all over again. You just wonder whether that's kind of seeped into his mentality in this fight. He's fighting like a guy that's frustrated. He looks a little bit tense. He's reaching a bit with his shots and Cordova, quite the opposite, looking very relaxed and was smiling in there at times. The lovely right hand and from Cordova. Martinez. Cordova rolls right back into those punches. Cordova sure does keep his hands down a lot. That was blocked. Nice body movement there from Cordova. Oh, oh what a hook! Caught with that left hook, and that buckles the knees. Cordova nearly went down. Blood now pouring out of his mouth. What a vicious hook! Well put, right on the chin, but. Joel was able to withstand that, and now he's back in the fight. Best punch of the bout so far, coming from Martinez. And he's looking for that same shot. He just Ooh. missed it by a little bit. Is the force, the ferocity, and the accumulation of those punches from Martinez just starting to now get to the challenger as we approach the midpoint of this contest? We're in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. The first ever Canelo Promotions broadcast along with Matchroom here on DeZone. It's been oh. a great card, and there's a big left hand, and wow. down goes Cordova. Martinez knew he needed that shot. He needed that knockdown to change the momentum of this fight. It was too close. And that is what he does, Todd. Let's see if Martinez can close the show. The crowd is on their feet. Martinez starting to land those hooks. He's stumbling around. Can Cordova get out of the line of fire? There's so long in this fight, Todd. So long to go in this round. The referee thinking about stopping it. And they will stop oh. it. Julio Cesar Martinez. Wow, 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 wow. What a finish. He didn't start well in this fight, we have to be honest about that. Cordova started brilliantly, picked his shots well, took the fight to Martinez, but we always knew that was the danger with the champion. At any point, he can land something that could change the course of a fight. He's done it time and time again in his career, and he's done it again here tonight. I'm still just taking this all in, because honestly, it was just such a war. And I mean, Cordova had received, right, so many good punches yeah. and was able to take it and withstand it. But then automatically, Martinez comes in with one big shot and just takes him out. You know what I mean? To a point where he just didn't know where he was. You could tell that he, his equilibrium was off. He didn't know where he was at. He didn't, couldn't even defend himself. I mean, maybe he could continue a little bit longer, but he was just getting punished and pummeled. Punch by punch with those big, huge shots by Martinez. I'm surprised with the performance from Cordova that he did an amazing job. But here you see the replay. He landed right on the chin. He continued, went after him. You could tell how bad of a position he was in. Oh, Caught him on the corner of the punch, at the end of the punch. Took him down in a vicious way. And this guy is one of the best fighters to ever capitalize on any knockdown. When he has you hurt, he finishes you, and this is what you're witnessing. An action-packed fighter, an entertainer. Fighter who doesn't care to get hit, but he's going to make sure that he lands his own. And Chris, I wonder a lot of times why other fighters don't do this. When you've got a guy in trouble, make the referee make a decision. He was just throwing a barrage of punches, and finally the referee just jumped in there and stopped it, even though Cordova, at least in a moment there, was starting to fight back. Yeah, and I think this is where your reputation as a puncher has to precede you, and, and the referee has to take that into account, and he's right to do so. We know the kind of damage that Martinez has done to fighters in the past. The referee knows that this isn't an ordinary puncher at 112 pounds. This is probably the biggest puncher in the world at 112 pounds, and you cannot let Joel Cordova take unnecessary punishment, regardless of how brave or how tough he was in there tonight. He was fantastic. He played his part in what's been a terrific night of boxing, but ultimately, I think the writing after the knockdown was, was on the wall for him.
And nice job there by Martinez to back out of range. Cordova was trying to grab him and hold on, Jesse. He didn't let him do it. He didn't let him do it. I mean, he, honestly, at the same time, he wasn't able to come back with his full potential, I guess you can say, because he immediately when he did come back, he didn't have balance on his punches, so it's not like he had any power on it. You know, he was just trying to come back that the way the referee wouldn't stop the fight. But it was very obvious that he was hurt and he hadn't recovered just yet. And what was going to happen was evident. I mean, Martinez was on the kill, was, up, was getting ready to finish him, and he did. I think the referee did a good job of stopping it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Garza calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute of round number six. Your winner by TKO. And still, the WBC flyweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar El Rey Martinez.